Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kay Rail, Chief Fitness Advisor for Pine Pollen Superfoods and Train for Longevity. Today we're going to be discussing five tips to build a stronger core. So, we all love to work the core, right? Well, it's more than just the abs, and that's what we're going to start with, with our first tip. Now, some of these tips I'm going to run past you may sound routine to you, but some of them may sound a little bit out there in left field. But a tip is always something that's a little bit of a hack that you didn't know about that's going to help improve your performance and improve your overall strength. So my first tip to you is this, and I got my handy dandy clipboard in front of me too. Do not just focus on the abs. So we go to the gym a lot and we see people lying on a mat and they're just doing crunch after crunch after crunch and they're doing sit up after sit up. Constantly doing flexion, constantly doing flexion. So yes, you're going to work your abs, which is the rectus abdominis, and we have an upper part and a lower part. But when you just do that, you're neglecting and missing out on all the rest of the parts of the core as well. So technically the core is kind of considered anywhere between like your mid thigh all the way up to the lower back. So you want to focus on this whole section of your body when you're doing core work. If you want to work your abs, that's fine. But you want to think outside the box and think more along the lines of all the core area, not just the abs. So that's tip number one. Secondly, learn how to properly use these tools called kettlebells. These right here. Why do you want to use kettlebells? Well, I'm going to tell you why. In order to build a strong core, you want to create tension in your muscles. And those things right there create a lot of tension, especially in the rectus abdominis, but in other areas as well. For example, if you're doing a renegade row, which I've shot videos for in the past, and you're on the ground like this, and you're holding yourself upright in a plank position with your hands on kettlebells, your core, your abs, your lower back, your obliques are all being fired up instantly. And as soon as you lift that arm off the ground like this, you're forced to contract these muscles at a greater amount of tension. So tension is the key and so doing something with kettlebells is always going to fire up the core like no other tool out there because you have to keep your core, your whole entire core tight when you're doing all kinds of kettlebell exercises regardless if it is a swing or a snatch, especially Turkish get-ups, squats, presses, renegade rows, you name it. You get a lot of core recruitment with kettlebells. So use those babies, learn how to use them correctly, watch some of our other videos on kettlebells and always go to someone who knows what they're doing for instruction. We don't want to get injured, we don't want to get hurt. So tip number two, learn how to use kettlebells correctly. Tip number three, add compound exercises to your regimen. So a compound exercise involves multiple joints, multiple muscles being recruited at the same time. Much like kettlebells, this causes a high amount of core recruitment. So let's take a deadlift for example. A good, a good quality deadlift, whether you're back straight, grabbing a barbell or grabbing a trap bar, or triangular bar shape, uh, trapezoidal shape bar, at the same time, and then standing up requires you to contract all of your core musculature at a high amount of tension and focus. So that's going to be a really good core exercise. A bench press, when you're lying on your back and you're pushing the bar up, yeah, you're doing shoulders and you're doing chest and all that kind of stuff, and your upper body is highly engaged. But you got to keep your abs really tight and you got to keep your back flat against the bench. So you're getting basically both sides of your core being activated. And you oftentimes should be squeezing your glutes as well to create tension around your whole core to keep your body straight and to improve your power output when you're doing bench presses. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a bench press or a deadlift or a barbell squat or any type of compound movement. Pull-ups also, really good for building core strength. So there's your third tip. Incorporate compound exercises into your regimen. Tip number four, perform three-dimensional movements. So let's go back to the crunch. That's one dimension. Right? It's linear. Crunch, 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 sit up, sit up, sit up. That's not really working your whole entire core. So if you do a three-dimensional movement where you do say, get into a plank position, and then you roll sideways, you go into a T-press here, and you go into a T-press here, and then you come down and you walk yourself back to a standing position. Walk yourself back down, and then repeat that. Maybe throw a push-up in for good measure. Maybe do a single leg push-up each leg, then a T-stand each side, and a hand walk back up. That's three-dimensional, so your body's moving around all these different planes of motion. So if you're on a football field, you're making tackles, you're making blocks, you're catching balls, you're twisting, you're turning. You want to make sure to add all these movements into your program to fully work your core. So you want rotation, you want lateral motion, you want bending, you want legs being lifted, all these other things. Make your body as off balance as you possibly can, and you're going to get a maximum amount of core recruitment. So that would be tip number four, incorporate three-dimensional movement patterns. And number five, incorporate off-the-ground training into your protocol. Anything off the ground is when you're hanging from a pull-up bar. So I mentioned pull-ups a little just a minute ago. If you're doing a pull-up, a good clean pull-up, you're going to be getting a lot of overall core recruitment because you're pulling up, you're working your lats and your back muscles while you're keeping your abs perfectly tight as can be to keep your body in perfect alignment and posture. So just a pull-up alone 
bringing your chin above the bar without going like this with your neck and lowering yourself all the way back down and coming back up is a fantastic exercise to work your core. Not to mention any exercise you do from a hanging position is going to be great. Well, another thing that I really love are skinned cats where you lie, you don't lie, you hang from the bar and then you take your legs and you weave them up in between your arms and you lower them behind your head and your body's like all crunked backwards and then you come back out like this. So then all of a sudden you're doing a three dimensional movement and you're doing circular movement and you're hanging from a bar. So you're doing a hanging exercise off the ground. So anything you do off the ground is going to be super beneficial. It's also known, it's known as brachiation, but technically brachiation would be like monkey bars out in the back of a park at an adult playground somewhere. So when monkeys hop from vine to vine or tree to tree, that's called technically called brachiation, but some people just consider anything hanging from a bar brachiation. I don't really care what you call it. What I call it is off the ground training. Hang from the bar, do some exercises from there. So that right there, my friends, is your fifth tip. This is K-Rail. I am live in my living room. And this is Pine Palm Superfoods and Train for Longevity. Make sure to like and share our videos and please subscribe to our page. If you have any questions or comments, always hit me up. Till next time, have a great day.